you're wondering how to get started in cybersecurity this year, you definitely come to the right place. My name is Josh Matacor, for those who don't already know, and I've helped a whole bunch of people on my channel and in general get jobs in cybersecurity and IT. And I've worked in a lot of different domains of cybersecurity myself, so I have a really good intuition of how to break into the field. And I do want to say before we get started, me and my team built a whole bunch of 100% free exam test banks, like a lot of practice questions for most of the CompTIAs, like CompTIA A+, Network+, Security+, SIZA+, Project+, we're building Pentest+, Plus right now. CISSP and ITIL, and we're going to build a whole bunch more. So definitely check those out. In exchange for the free practice questions, please consider subscribing. I would really appreciate it a lot. I'm not going to sell anything in this video. It's going to be purely informational, and I'm really confident about my viewpoint, as in I think I'm right about what I'm saying. So if you think I'm wrong, definitely let me know in the comments so we can have a discussion about it or something. People tend to get confused about breaking into the field, and no doubt you've heard people say like, oh, you need to know how to code. You need to know how to use Linux. But the reality is there's a lot of different domains in cybersecurity, and it's not like an auditor is going to need to know how to use Python or somebody working in governance is going to need to know the ins and outs of Linux or something like this. It just doesn't make sense. It depends on where you're working, right? And it's not like every single job is really clean cut, like, oh, this is a, a governance job. This is an operations job. Like the title will be as such sometimes. But for example, I was working as a vulnerability management program manager, like a, a program manager, but I would use Linux sometimes because my platform was on Linux and I'd have to troubleshoot it. And I would use programming programming sometimes because I needed to do something, I needed to automate something to make my job and life easier. So there's a lot of like mixture between them. So it's not like you need to study only audit and like be an auditor like you can, but it's, it's more like mixed up than that. So it can be kind of hard to pick where to focus, but I will say for sure, especially for new people, everyone trying to get into cybersecurity should have at least security plus level knowledge. I'm not necessarily saying go and give CompTIA $404 or something like this, but you should have that level of knowledge. You can get it for free from Professor Messer or even the Google cybersecurity program for free if you like blitz it in seven days, um, or you just, you know, get that certification and make sure you absorb as much as you can. But everyone should have at least that level of knowledge. And I do talk about this on my channel a lot. Uh, this is something I came up with to help you think about what you need to do in order to increase your chances of breaking into any field really, but particularly cybersecurity for this example. Basically, everything boils down to getting an interview, passing an interview. Those are the only two things that you need to worry about. And all these other boxes are just facilitators for those things. So, for example, like social network, if your dad is the CEO of CrowdStrike, that's like a really strong social network. And then you probably don't really need much of anything else, right? If you have a, a strong enough social network. But if you don't have that, you know, you can make up for in other areas. For example, having a really good resume and having really good interview skill. So, basically, you can use this chart and measure it against yourself and really be honest with yourself and kind of see where your gaps are. I'm just going to like, talk about some general things that you can do. For example, if you don't have a resume, I'll put at least I'll put a link to that in the, in the description so you can copy that resume. But if you don't have education, can you afford one in terms of time or money? Because you can get a bachelor's degree from WGU for like relatively inexpensive compared to like 20 years ago when you have to waste four or five years. Do you have any certifications? Because you don't need certifications to break in IT, but it certainly will help you for sure. Like, can you afford to get CompTIA Security Plus, right? Because that has a lot of name recognition. And if you can't afford to, I would recommend getting that level of knowledge and then putting on your resume, like, CompTIA Security Plus in progress or something like this. Um, at least that will give you an ATS hit for, like, those automated resume scanners. If you don't have a portfolio, this is really huge, especially if you're trying to break into cybersecurity. You, you really need to make one, right? So you can use this video to learn how to make a portfolio. You can use this video to create some cybersecurity projects to go on it. If you don't have any experience, you can always generate experience for yourself, right? You can make a bunch of cybersecurity content creation, make your own LLC or something, publish that content on like YouTube or a blog or LinkedIn or something. You can build like a mini following by posting like security plus practice question, like polls every day or something, put that on your resume. It's something, it's better than not having any experience, right? There's always something that you can do to make your resume decent. And then in terms of passing your interview, like self-presentation, this is like really obvious, you know, clean yourself up and be appropriate looking. But in terms of interview skill and technical ability, this will, this is where labbing comes into practice, like doing labs, 
practicing labs, doing something over and over and over again, because the more you do something, the better you're going to like the better intuition you're going to have for it and the easier it is and the easier it's going to be to talk about it once you actually get into the interview. And of course, there and of course, you can actually practice interviewing as well. I have a couple of videos that go over a bunch of different practice questions, teach you like interview theory and like how to interview properly and stuff. So you can watch those and get better at interviewing. And if you're wondering how to do this or what projects to do, um, I'll tell you, but I'm going to talk about my course a bit because I kind of have to. So sorry about that. But I just I did just get done interviewing probably about 10 people who went through my course and then ended up getting some kind of job in cybersecurity or IT. And most of them had this experience where they they went through the course and they, they do the lab portion of the course a lot which i'll tell you like everything is that's in it so you can just do it on your own without buying the course if you want to but most of those people they went through the the lab portion a lot and they talked about it and showed it to the interviewer and the interviewer is really impressed with the, with what they were doing like you don't have to be like i went through josh's course i don't want people to say that rather i want them to be like oh i did this project right and the project is impressive because basically they just build inside of microsoft azure like in the cloud they we set up a miniature sock and then we expose a bunch of our assets like virtual machines to the live internet and it gets attacked inevitably from bots and bad actors and then we aggregate and kind of display the attack data on maps and we practice incident response against the attacks and it's a really good lab especially if you do it many times because it gives you a good in gives you a good intuition of security operations and incident response and it really shows that you have at least it conveys a passion that you have like a passion for cybersecurity. so I, I would recommend doing that. Like you don't necessarily have to go through the course to do it. You can do those things on your own. Just do it many times and then put it on your resume and then you can talk about it. And it, it's really impressive. And you don't even have to do that lab. Like I have a bunch of other projects like that you can follow for free. And if you do them and you're able to talk about them in the interview, right, it will convey some kind of passion and it will impress interviewers. And as someone who's hired a lot of people, this is, to be honest, I like to see like you know, security plus and those like basic things. But I really like to see when people go out of their way to do something extra and they're able to talk about it because it really does convey passion and it shows that you're doing those like extra stuff that your peers aren't doing. So it's really important whether or not it's, you know, my course, my free projects on YouTube, or you just make up your own, you should really do something and have it on your resume and you, you should have done it enough times to where you can like easily talk about it. And for full transparency, this is all the stuff that's in my course. So you can kind of look at it and then go and try to study it and implement it on your own. The benefit of the course is that it's just kind of like packaged up nicely, but I'm not like selling information where like this is my information, I'm selling it to you. Like you can you can have those for free, right? The course, it just costs money because it it costs money to maintain and update it because Azure is like changing all the time. And there's like an internship component um, in the course as well that costs like energy to like maintain, right? But you can pretty much implement all this stuff for free, right? And in terms of like if you're ready to actually start applying for cybersecurity jobs, if your resume looks something like this, this is kind of like an ideal resume for a new person trying to break into cybersecurity. I'll kind of put something on the screen here. So this is this is basically the resume that students in my course they will get this template and then after they go through the course it will look something like this so if you can make your resume look like this and then you can you know make sure it's like the truth right like study all those things do all of do all of the stuff so you are like this person and then you start applying to jobs like nice quality applications then you know Obviously, you're going to be able to start getting interviews, and if you've practiced your lab enough times and you've practiced interview questions enough times, you're just going to get hired uh, eventually, and that's the reality of things. And this this resume is more like security operations centric because it involves dealing with the lab quite a bit, where we do you know incident response. But there's a lot of other stuff on here that you can see, like the um, regulatory stuff like PCI DSS, knowledge of HIPAA, some NIST frameworks like NIST 853. Um, I don't know if I put cybersecurity framework on here, but if your resume looks something like this and all of these certifications are here, the, these are m mostly free or really cheap 
Uh, so for example, this like FEMA incident management system, that's like an incident response certification that you like training you can get for free online. You can Google it. Qualis Vul vulnerability management. This is also free and it's something that I recommend students get and put on their resume. CompTIA Security Plus, once you have that level of knowledge, you can put CompTIA Security Plus like in progress on your resume if you're you know studying for it. Just be prepared to, to talk about it. Projects, a nice project section, portfolio at the top. Just make sure you know your resume is good and squared away like this. And if you can make this a reality, then you're ready to start applying to jobs and work in cybersecurity with, you know, it will take some effort, but I can say that you're ready at this point. And then in terms of what jobs to apply for, pretty much anything and everything, but you can be somewhat realistic. For example, you're probably not going to get like chief information security officer or senior security architect, probably not for your first job. I mean, I was working in IT already and my first cybersecurity job was like senior information security analyst. So like, don't completely rule it out. But once your resume is like looking pretty decent like this and you have a decent amount of projects or at least one project that's kind of big that you've done a lot of times, People will see that and they'll be like, oh, this person has, they know about cybersecurity, they have a passion and they obviously have an aptitude and they're able to execute on your own. This is like kind of an indicator that you're able to do like a lot of different other things, right? So I've had somebody, they went through the cybersecurity course and they executed on it really, really well. And their first job was information security officer and they were kind of in management, like a program manager, like their first job. I've seen this like many times and it's happened to me as well. So the, the more you kind of like sharpen your axe, the better job that you're going to be able to get when you actually get into the field. It seems it seems crazy and cybersecurity is kind of considered mid career, but there's no there's no rule or law that says like, oh, you need to like go through all this other BS first before you can make, you know, 70, 80, 90, 100 K as your for your first job in cybersecurity. It's it's possible. Anyone who says it's not possible is is wrong and they're gatekeeping and they're like, you know, they have some problem in my opinion. But it's just a matter of like how much you're willing to sharpen your axe, obviously, right? Even somebody sitting in their mom's basement, right? They're just like doing ethical hacking and bug bounty all day, like sweating and playing Valorant and eating Cheetos. But they're really good at bug bounty. They, it's possible they get hired as like senior AppSec engineer at some like Fortune 500 company because their skill is like so good and they displayed aptitude and passion. That's like really all it boils down to. And then the employability framework is just like a guide to kind of help you understand where you're weak, like what you need to care about. And if you're missing something, you know, at least you can look at that framework and then decide to make up for it somewhere else, if that makes sense. So yeah, to recap, look at this framework, you know, get a good baseline of security level knowledge. If you have money, just get security plus. If you don't have money, get that level of knowledge. And then everyone else, you know, Everyone should be having a portfolio, making their resume good. Just adhere to this framework as, as good as you can in terms of like what your money and time and energy will allow. Make sure your resume is good. Use this one. Use these free practice questions if you want. And just start applying to jobs. Hope this helps.